at Urban Meyer, and uh, sure enough, they got an actual head coach, and you see the output. I really think the future is definitely bright for the Jazz, man. Trevor, y'all got one in Trevor, man, for sure. Yeah, we got our guy at quarterback. Um, it was good to see that comeback, man. We got one more week play Chiefs. We'll see where we at with it. Um, we got we got a big show on the way. Duntavis to be here in a little bit, but he's already you know, in. We can bring him in. Um, oh, let's hang out. You ready? All right, cool. Yeah, we'll get into the shenanigans of, of Florida recruiting with Jay Rashad and also Miami shenanigans with uh, Kermani McClain. Uh, Colorado once we done. shenanigans. Oh, Colorado. My bad. <laughs> Disrespectful of you, man. <laughs> my phone like when I start talking. DJ, what's good? What's the word with y'all? How y'all doing, man? Not much, good, not man, much, good. man. We got um Dontavious Jackson, former FSU linebacker, checking in with us. Man, let's uh let's hang out a little bit, bro. Um, a lot of people want to hear what you got to say in regards to you know how things turned out at FSU and just your opinion on situations. But let's take it back a little bit to uh your recruiting days. Now you you're a highly recruited player, man. Four star linebacker, blue chip linebacker. Uh, let's just talk about that process a little bit and some of the top schools you were looking at and um how you kind of read it through. The yeah, recruiting process. Uh, the recruiting process it was it was probably the funnest process for me, but um, you know it came down to Florida State, Texas, and Alabama. Uh, I, I kind of figured I wasn't gonna go to Texas because I didn't want to deal with the coaching change problem because I knew Charlie Strong was gonna eventually get up out of there. And you know, uh, you know, Tim Brewster was my head recruiter, so when he on you, he on you. You know, he was, he was on my ass. So, you know what I'm saying? I just, I felt the love with Florida State. And once I, you know, took my official visit, I went to the Miami game when Dalvin went crazy in 2016. I mean, just pick your pause with that. I mean, I mean he, went, he went crazy just by every year against them boys, man. Yeah, <laughs> but then, yeah. It, yeah, that, that was the time, hamstring year, right? Yeah, every time he broke and the stands shaking, I'm like, oh, yeah, this for me right here. I, I got chills going through my body. So that. That really just set it off, just the visits and then how strong Florida State was recruiting me. That that set them apart from Alabama, honestly. So back then, though, Brew had um he had a reputation of being a, a relentless recruiter. What? Let's talk about uh, Tim Brewster and, and at that point in time, uh, how he was as being a recruiter. Man, Tim Brewster, master finesse, master talk. <laughs> and I like that. I like that word. Hey, hey, if he hey, if he wasn't if he wasn't the coach, the man would be a pimp or something. The man could talk. Mm. Talk game strong, for real, for real. Like he, he I just he, seen him in a Colorado video, man. I was just like, he's still selling that shit, man. I see him yeah, out here. He go and he gonna get a motherfucker ready to want through a wall. I'm telling you. Yeah, he you has know, some juices going. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he, I mean, he had already had Pop committed. And you know, Pop is my right hand man. I see him. Mm-hmm. And so he had him and Levante on me. So it, it wasn't only him; it was him and Levante. And you know, they were kind of. They were, I ain't gonna say kind of. They were on my ass, you know. We at the opening, the under on the game, so it was kind of like coming from every every aspect, you know. I was like, I got my homies telling they already committed. And then you know, I got this, this coach. He saw me. He really wanted me, you know. So I was like, you know, I feel like this is home. I can come in and make an immediate impact, and that's what I was trying to do. So, so um, how and, and, and it's tough, especially being a Texas kid. How tough was it for you to leave, to leave the state, the state of Texas? And how big uh, Nick, is the pressure, you know, Longhorn pressure within the state to go to, you know, the University of Texas or Texas A&M? Uh, honestly, it, it was it was tough until I it was actually time to leave because you know Texas pushed hard. Like even like even that morning the signing day, like I was I was literally ignoring phone calls from them because I knew it. I, you know, I knew who I was signing to. I just didn't want to tell them, hey, I'm going with that. It was. So a lot of people, you know, back home, they didn't want me to go that far because they, you know, they wanted to come see me play or they felt like I would do better in Texas or keep, you know, keep the best Texas kids in Texas. But I wasn't thinking about that. You know, I was thinking long term, you know, and I, I just, I felt like Florida State was the place that I could do that. And Texas and Texas and then the state that they were at, you know, it just wasn't, it wasn't what I was looking for. What was uh real quick? What was while we here? Charlie Strong is still a guy. He's at Miami right now. He's coached at University of Florida, so he's a guy that's around the, the big three. Uh, what what's his recruiting pitch like? What was his recruiting pitch to you like uh, for Texas? Um, basically, you know, coming in, you know, he had the five ready for me. You know, he was he came he came in and let me know, you know, that they needed impact players immediately at you know say at the linebacker position. Which let me know I can come in and play. I had already looked at the roster and I knew I could come in and play. 
Um, and then just just being about just be about being comfortable. He, you know, he was pitching that. Oh, you go somewhere else, you're gonna be uncomfortable. You're gonna be homesick, etc. But uh, you know, I, I'm a pretty mature dude, so I I really didn't feel like I was scared to lead a state. You know, I got a little homesick once I got there for a little bit, but you get over it, right? Especially when you're in Tallahassee. <laughs> so brew, yeah, right. Especially in Tally, right? Um, there's a lot of stuff that are definitely uh, that are definitely ease your mind a little bit about being far, them, far from home. They match them Texas, <laughs> them Texas cheeks. Yeah, <laughs> they say everything right. bigger in Texas. I don't. Tally might have something to say about that, right? Right at home, man. We got fam. You right there. Look, I have my times. So talk about your official visit. I know um, the gym will kind of set up for you pretty decent, right? Yeah, my so my official visit, my whole school was Dalvin and Jalen. So that's all you needed right there, then, man. Yeah, it was it was over after that. You know, after the at the Miami game, you know, they took me to Champions Hall. That was my first time actually seeing it. I'm like, damn, this is where we stay when we come in. You know, that had me that had me going off rip. Cause that was one of my things going in, man. I didn't want to stay in the dorm. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't want to. That was one of the, the, my biggest things in recruitment, I don't know why I just didn't want to stay in the dorm, bro. So I took me to Champions Hall, then we went out. And yeah, after that official, I knew it was over with after that. Cause I, I took all five of my officials in, and they were all lit. But after that official with Dalvin and Jalen, I said, oh, yeah. The city was crazy then. What, what was your five? Uh, my five was UCLA, Michigan, Alabama, uh, Florida, and um, Florida State, of course. Man, beautiful fire. That's a solid fire. Man, I'm gonna say this too. I only took the Florida official because they offered my brother and they were talking about offering my teammate. So I told him, look, the only way I'm gonna go there is if y'all offer all three of us and we come as a package. And they end up never offering my third teammate, so we end up not going. I feel that we'll offer anybody back then. We offered Trey Sanders' brother. <laughs> no, I remember. I, I remember that. Got him, on, got him on campus and all. Man, had me lying by Trey Sanders, brother. <laughs> hey, I remember that. I like how you held him at gunpoint, though. Yeah, yeah, but they yeah, ain't like flinch, that. you know. They they they, 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 they held strong with that. We'll give you one. We'll do. We'll right, give right. you one, but two. I don't know about uh, two. Pushing it, bro. <laughs> hey, but so speaking of Jim, a lot of people talk about Jim Boy has been a recruiter so far. Brew, what what's your um, open the door a little bit. I guess Jimbo came in the close. How was Jimbo down the stretch of recruiting? I know people say he's a, relent, a relentless recruiter. Excuse me. Talk about him and his pitch to you that, that kind of got you to swing to Florida State as well. Uh, honestly, Jimbo's push kind of like sealed it. So I, I announced on National Signing Day, which was a Wednesday, and that Monday night I was, you know, I was trying to make a decision with my family. Like we went out to dinner and all that. And I remember I actually I actually chose Alabama at the dinner table. Mm. At the at that same dinner table, Jimbo calls me. And we have a two hour conversation. And he's basically telling me everything I can do at Alabama, I can do at Florida State, but I can do it my way. I can do it how I want to do it. You know what I'm saying? I, I was big on that because you know when I was coming out, everybody, you go to Alabama, you're gonna be a robot, it's a system and you know all that, but I, I was just thinking about playing at a big school that you know that's top ranked, so I can make plays on a good team. And, you know, what I'm saying be a contributor. So you know, he and he was telling me everything I wanted to hear. We stayed on the phone for about two hours. We ended up not not leaving the restaurant until about one in the morning, and then I basically silently committed that night, and then I announced Wednesday morning. Yeah, that's that's, that's a good closer, good closer story. That's what's up. <laughs> So let's fast forward a little bit. You get the FSU. Was it, was it a culture shock coming from the high school ranks to the college ranks? Just the adjustment. Because, you know, in, in high school, you're the man, you know, uh, four-star, five-star, big-time guy on campus. At FSU, everybody's four-stars. Everybody's five-stars. And they were big-time guys on campus as well. Um, so was that a big adjustment for you, you know, going from the high school ranks to the college ranks? Uh, it was, if, uh, man, it, I, I mean, at first, the workouts, getting adjusted to summer workouts and the spring training. You know, it's you know it's a difference between that and high school. So like, just that as far as the you know the competition wise, you know, it was I mean it was it was football. You know, it was it was you you know in high school you played a couple dogs. I just felt like it was more dogs. So you know, so I just had to step my 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 game up. So what was it? I mean, what was the, it? What was the D recruitment? 
What was the de-recruitment process? Like when you realized that the recruit, because I know they're going to lie to you a little bit and, and put some icing on, on, on it a little bit and uh, they lay it on thick recruiting you. But when you get there and you start vibing a little bit, you start seeing the real Jimbo come out. What was that moment for you like? When was it? Uh, it happened my first camp. I'm not <laughs> even going to lie. My, one of my first fall camp practices. I'm not even going to lie to you. I did something. I, like we, was, we were thudding. And I think I knocked somebody to the ground. And you know, That's Jimbo, you know it. He, it, I, 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 I knocked down to the ground one day. I got kicked out of practice that day. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I knocked somebody to the ground, and we were supposed to be thudding. And Jimbo, he know where everybody from. So when, whenever you fuck up on the field, he, that chicken shit, I see your ass back to Houston. He kind of like, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> snapped on me in front of the whole team. It, it was a whole little thing. Everybody laughing in the meetings the day after. But that was kind of like my welcome to college moment as far as coaching. Because yeah. I didn't have some welcome to college moments on the field. But that's <laughs> give me, give me a welcome to college moment on the field, man. Because I know that that's pretty much what we hear. We get a lot of these former players on and talk about the battles and stuff and, and playing against these you know great players on practice because, you know, Florida, Miami, FSU, it's great guys on both sides. And it's a lot of battles, you know, within – you know those practices and things like that. So give me your uh, welcome to college moment on the actual football field. Uh, I got I got two for you actually. I got one one in coverage and one engaging with one of our linemen. So uh, no, I mean one of our fullbacks. My excuse me. So uh, one the first thing I was covering Dow. We was doing one on one, man. I was covering Dow. Uh, he ran a, well. It was out and up, but I didn't get the out. I mean up. You know, I'm, I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm playing out. I look back. I think I'm finna, you know, I think I got me an interception. I turn around, bro, in the end zone with the ball. Oh. I, I don't know how he got there that fast. <laughs> man, the motherfucker's so fast, man. I said, God <laughs> damn. <laughs> but then, then my, my next situation, I had I had to meet, meet Freddie Stevenson in the hole. Yeah. <laughs> when I, my first time meeting him in the hole, I literally, I was, I was a little dizzy. I had to. You know what I'm saying? Come tell myself, okay, you're going to have to bring this shit with this motherfucker every time. Dude. Man, Freddie going to drop that bucket, man. I'm telling you, Freddie going to drop that bucket. But that was definitely – and the coverage play, you know, you can live with that. But Freddie, yeah, that was my – for sure. Wait, That's a little different. Ball, young yeah, for sure. Well, that <laughs> I'm in the weight room, huh? Right. Yeah, I, I definitely had to hit the weight room after that one. I felt a little insecure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you want hey, to so, look at the chart? How much you weigh? Right. Yeah, yeah, there ain't there no way. They, they had to tell me he played line. He used to play linebacker. I didn't know that when I first got there. So I was like, yeah. okay. He got some of that attitude. Like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. most yeah. most fullbacks like on the team yeah. in high school, most in, in ball, like when you play both ways in high school, most fullbacks play a linebacker, or linebackers play a fullback. Um, it's not kind of the same shit. Yeah, oh, the, that's the, the crazy play. thing is I play receiver and linebacker, bro. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. 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 People don't people don't know that, but yeah, I play receiver and linebacker. So that's let's um cool. let's talk about the end of Jimbo, man. Like this, this mm-hmm. tell me how that whole situ- how that whole situation went down within that 2017 season because um, a lot of people hit the back swords and stuff. Um, just talking to some recruits for that class, like Asante Samuel. He was pretty much saying that uh, shit. We ain't, I ain't hear from FSU. He signed in December. I haven't heard from FSU in like August. You know things like that. So just talk about the signs within that locker room. Did you guys get a feeling he was going to be leaving? Or what, how does that? How did that whole situation play out in 2017 with Jimbo Fisher uh, in the Texas A&M situation? Y'all know me. I'm gonna keep it all the way a thousand, all the way raw. After Francois got hurt against yes, Alabama, he was coaching with one foot in. One for that the whole time. It's, I guess they were constructing the contract. We caught the vibe though, and we actually brought it to him, brought it up to him as a team, and he no uh, doing doing a team meeting. Yeah, we brought we brought it up to him as a team. Like we asked him, like, bro, is you leaving or not? You know what I'm saying? We asked him straight up, and he was like, uh, basically said he basically discredited the rumors. He was like, if I was gonna leave, I'd tell you guys first, and all that, blah blah blah. The next day, we literally, we literally, I'm talking about us, before meetings, before practice, we get an ESPN notification. Y'all seen the Christmas Jimbo tree? Fisher, Jimbo Fisher signed a $75 million contract, 10 years, going to Texas a and Then we get a TeamWorks team message, I mean, uh, team meeting uh, message. 
I said, fuck that meme, man. I'm not even going to excuse my language. I'm not <laughs> even going to lie to you. I didn't know until the final meme. <laughs> but I, we, during the season, you can kind of see he, he stopped recruiting. You, you can feel like I can feel the difference between how he treated and recruiting my freshman year and my sophomore year. My freshman year, he, he even though he was more, he was still more worried about the team. He he was gonna go do what he needed to do recruiting wise. That twenty seventeen year it was it was over. The, he knew he wasn't coming back. Mm-hmm. So one, and then once Francois got hurt and he knew we couldn't have the season we should have, he he stopped coaching with maximum effort. And I, I can say that with with, with my full chest. And uh, he he I ain't gonna say established in the back. Because shit, it's seventy five million. But keep it, you know what I'm saying. Be honest with, with us. Like, keep, 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 just keep be honest with us. But you I still think he stabbed you on the back at the same fucking time. Though the, the, the we talking about August to damn December, right? Like that's a yeah, whole. whole time. Like, that's a quarter of a fucking year where you're getting paid by FSU to Man, where you know right, so, do your job, right? Do your job to the end. I mean, I can respect that, but you you half ass the whole fucking season. I yeah. just watched Dan Mullen do it last year. Like, like yeah. just pretty much try to lose games. Back it up. Damn it. Yeah, like, it's wild. Yeah, it yeah. happens. I watched yeah. Harbaugh do it for the 49ers. Yeah, you're right. They'll, they'll pack it up, man. Like, all right, I know I'm going. He knew he was going to, to Michigan, so. Yeah, whatever. They, they, when they know, they know. And they, they, these deals, they, they don't just pop up. They be talking about these deals. For right, time. for sure. You know what I'm saying? So, like, we knew, we already knew it. So, as soon as the announcement came, we like, bro, this man been. Plotting on this the whole season, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, and we start adding stuff up. That's why he ain't care. Once we call him, miss that workout, or and when he really would have got on somebody, got on the whole team as the whole position group as, you know, he just was being so nonchalant with stuff, you know. And, What's that feeling like though? Like on some real shit? Because I know like this guy preached in, in the recruiting process of like how much he care about you and all that, and and to see as a young man. Uh, you you like 19 20 years old and start seeing like man this guy really just about business that there's a feeling the emotions come from that what, what does that feel like uh honestly i was i was very upset i was very upset i'm not even gonna lie to you like at the time i was like i was thinking about like you know transferring out not because i didn't love my school but because of the way you know i, I, I didn't want to deal with that you know what i'm saying like that's literally one of the reasons i cut texas out i didn't want to deal with the coach change you know like i wanted to come in and play for one, play under one coaching staff Right. That was like, regardless of where I went, that was my goal, just to play on the one coaching staff, you know. So I what know, a what I, a what a mature uh, uh, requirement, you know what I'm saying, or 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 shit to like base your recruitment off. Everybody base it off so much bullshit, but uh, just continuity is is very key to getting developed, bro. So I think that was sure. a very mature uh, thing to stand on in recruiting. And 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 before we get into tag tag the tag years, that's that's. That's why I was I was always so angry my last two years. We'll get to that later. Willie <laughs> will do that to him. <laughs> I can imagine being a Florida State fan during them years. Man, Especially after you had to lie for him, you know, as the fans. They they well, had to lie for him. Like shit too. Oh my God. Man. Man. So, anyway, man, go ahead. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. As one of the players, man, look. Look, we, bro, trust me, we felt y'all pain times 10 because we know what we was capable of. We know the roster we had. And now, you know, it's like, now, now look at people from that roster. Anthony Grant in Nebraska going crazy. Caitlin LeBorn, uh Marshall, Marshall going Grant. crazy. Uh, DJ Matthews, Indiana, had a great season. Uh, Cyrus Fagan. Corey Dirty, it just, and the list goes on. We had so much talent on that roster. It's just they didn't know what they were doing with it. <laughs> so let's let's we, we go get up. To, yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. So you go from Jimbo to Tag. Let's talk about the initial feelings in regards to that Tag and hiring, and, and um, how, how how things transpired with that. How how you know how to excuse me how the things transpired going from uh, Jimbo Fisher to Willie Tag within that first year, and, and what good things he do at uh, FSU for you guys that you guys thought were going to be good, you know, because everyone like the no, the no, because everyone feel like Jimbo was just too tough and, and no fun zone, didn't, didn't let you guys be on social media, this, that, and other. And looking back on it, some of that stuff, it looks like he, he was in the right of it, but they kind of right. go from that to Willie, to the, the Willie freelance, like, hey, you guys, the players type of coach, how was that? Um, it was it was a lot of it was a lot of bad, but it was some good. 
some good, I would say, you know, because Willie is not a bad dude. Like, like, even though it may seem like sometimes I have some animosity towards him, Willie is a great guy. We had a great relationship, you know, as far as men. When it came to football practice, I just don't feel like, like, we'll, we'll run through a set of plays or a script, and we won't, none of the, none of the plays will be right, but we'll be going to the next period. You know what I'm saying? Instead like, of redoing you know, it. Yeah, instead instead of doing this shit to his right, instead of doing this shit to everybody knows their assignment, he just running through the practice. He just running through the script. Jim with Jimbo, a motherfucker run around two yards too deep. He liable to start this whole motherfucking practice over, literally from stretch, make us go back in the locker room and all that. You know what I'm saying? So it was just the difference. It was it was the accountability fell back, way way back, and that's and. and and that's what we kind of like, you know, we as as players, we kind of like felt like a, we had like a, I ain't going to say a shell, but we were kind of like, you know, like coaches, you know, like right, especially right. after we, you know, we were, we were going out with putting on some, putting some bad tape on film, right. and you know what I'm saying? And we not, I'm not going to put that all on the coach, but you practice, I mean, you play how you practice, you know, and, and what you practice is how you're going to play, so, and, and how you're going to coach also, so. I mean, the fun in it was, you know, we, we got music at practice. So that was enjoyable. <laughs> but, I, but none of the, you know, in hindsight, I feel like we shouldn't have did that. Because, you know, because we couldn't hear shit. Whenever he, somebody did try to correct it, we couldn't hear shit. You know what I'm saying? We, or, or, somebody, or, or somebody yeah. in the corner dancing to the song, not paying attention. Now we got to repeat ourselves. Now somebody else not paying it, it just too much. I love this because this is exactly how we pictured it. <laughs> like it's good to get this insight. Because like I would draw these cartoons in my head where it would be like somebody just over there. <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> and so you know, like, 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 like the whole picture of everybody dancing, you see Landon Dickerson just look over and then shake his head and kind of yeah, like what in me? the fuck I signed up for. I'm going Dickerson, down. Dickerson went on the hoop as well. Yeah, yeah, he went to Alabama, Alabama started yeah, more than that. Hell, and then even that first year, we talk about the, those other people. You got to throw in Brian Burns, who's a fucking all pro, right. Cam Makers, running back. So it it, it was a lot of t- and then French, French, I think Frenchy too. You know he he was um. Still not as mobile within as far as you know how he yeah. was that previous year due to knee injury, but his right. ball was still alive and he could still you know do things as a quarterback, I believe. Right, for sure, for sure. We had so much talent on that team, man. And I, you know, what do we end up doing that year? Uh, five or seven. Five no, or no, seven, yeah, five man. or seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah we broke, so. we broke the bowl streak that year, man. I was that hurt. Being a you know being a part of the team to end the end the bowl streak that hurt, and, that, and that's. And that's why I took it so personal, and and that's where the the collision came my senior year with the coaching staff. That's when I start I, I start voicing how I felt, and that's what kind of it, it, it messed me over in the long game as far as you know in the long game as far as what they were what they were saying to scouts or what they were saying to people. But I'm I'm gonna be me regardless where or no matter where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? So so what were those conversations no like? And what were you, what were you voicing your issues about? You want me to keep it all the way a book with you, bro? I had no linebacker coach. Hold up, hold up. Let's back up a little bit. Because um, <laughs> let's back up a little bit. Let's back up a little bit. Huh? Uh, Raymond Woody was supposed to be the linebacker coach, right? Then, so, what, yeah, let's talk, so, so speak on that a little bit. I know and then, uh, then we have Raymond Jim Levin, too. He was off field, correct? He came from, Very Raymond old. came for like two weeks. Okay. That was in the middle of the season, too, I believe. Yeah. I, I, I loved when he came. I was so grateful when he came. Listen Damn, to me, crazy. and this is no shade. And I told this man this to his face, so I'm not talking about him. I know more football than Raymond Woody. I used to hold <laughs> linebacker meetings at my house so we can watch film and get through film. You can ask D, uh, D-Lo, who's still on the roster now. You know, uh, Amari Gaynor. I used to host linebacker meetings at my house because we couldn't get through film with brother. Like, it was that bad. Damn. Like, it was that bad. Like. Linebackers, we didn't have a coach. Like it was that bad. Like, so what's the chain of command in a situation like that? Do you do you do you approach Willie Taggart about that? All the time, all the time, and that's when we start having. Well, that was with the guy. 
Exactly. And that's yeah. when me and Willie start having our butt ends. Because I'm going to Willie like, bro, we can't keep doing this. Like, we look like shit. And, and we're not going to get better if he if we're not getting coached. Like, it don't matter how much talent in the room. And we had a shitload of talent in that room. You know, even though we weren't performing, like, we had a shitload of talent in that room. Jalen Woodby, um, D'Lo, Amari, me, Little Warner, um, Emmett Rice. You know, we had all these guys. And they just weren't, like, it, like I, I never understood me and Emmett. Me and Emmett never played. Me and Emmett played one game on the field together, basically our whole career. Me and Emmett, there's no way me and Emmett should, shouldn't have been playing next to each other. It was just too much going on, and like, and Willie couldn't take that coming from a player, you know. And that's when that's when we started bumping heads. That's why towards the end of my senior year, after I broke my hand, I was like, "Fuck it, I'm not coming back." I couldn't play for him no more, you know. Like, I, that's why I didn't go to the to the to the bowl game. I was like, "Bro, I'm just ready to get out of here, bro." Because these guys, no, nothing against my school, it was all them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just, it was so bad, man. I can't even, I, I'm, I'm going to elaborate way more. You know, I got the podcast coming. You know, I want to bring you guys on just like you brought me guys on to y'all, y'all platform. But I'm going to break it down so much more, man. It was very bad, man. It was very bad. So you seem like a, you know, like you say, you came in level-headed, real mature guy. But I got to imagine there's got to be some resentment for how that whole situation played out. I mean, going from a coach with one foot in, one foot out to – a coach who's completely just unprepared and lost out there. So kind of how do you how did you cope with that? Uh, you know, being a, a guy that had a high ceiling, um, and then going through that experience, possibly, you know, railroading your 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 trajectory. Um, you know, of course at first I kind of, you know, it, it set me back a little bit. I went through a little depression. You know, I went through a lot of things, you know, because you know, me coming up, all I was thinking was NFL. You know, once I started blowing up, so once you know, once everything kind of you know kind of went went the way it did, you know, I was I was kind of stuck for a little bit, but I had to get over it and 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 find my purpose, and and basically I, I now I feel like my purpose is to help kids coming out like me who didn't have guidance, who didn't have someone to tell them, hey. You should do this if this happens, because this this will help you in the long run. Just right. stuff like that. Let, let, letting these kids know how to move while they're in school, and, and you know what what when the coach says something, what it really means, like what the underlining meaning means, and, and, and stuff like that. You know, because I want to use my story to basically help kids never make the mistakes I did or have to go through what I did. Cause there's so many kids. It's, it's a lot of kids. It's a lot of people that that's that was in my same position. They, you know, they were very talented, had decent college careers, and and didn't get to fulfill their life dream. You know what I'm saying? How how would the transfer portal? Because now these kids, uh, I mean, it's some kids that have been in like four or five different schools, and some of them are doing all right. They just keep changing situations. Um, some of them aren't doing good, but there are some that have been productive years and have been at like three or four schools. Uh, what would you have been the guy that participated in that? Um, had Jimbo left for doing your time? The rules are a little different now. Uh, honestly, yeah, because back then you would have got that get out of jail free card. That um, you would have yeah, to, yeah. to play immediately. So, um, I I don't. I honestly, I honestly thought about it. Like I was thinking about transferring after Jimbo left, but. I love my school so much, man, and I love my teammates. And that was really what, what made me stay. Like, me, me and Tagger had a talk. And, you know, before everything got started, he had us going. He had us believing in him. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, we had that first team meeting and shit. We thought we was shit, we thought we was going to go 12 and up. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but, so I was like, after we had that, I was like, I'm going to stay. Like, this is my school. You know, you know, I'm no brother to the death. I, I got it tatted before I was on campus. So, like, I was like, I'm not finna, I'm not finna leave. I feel like if these coaches can do the same thing or at least something somewhere near, you know, so I'm like, I just stay. I'm, I'm, I'm a stay. But at one point, I was thinking about, you know, transfer. So, we go from Target and then you um, got the current state of FSU program, Mike Norvell. I mean, seeing your takes on the timeline about the program and, and kind of seeing these guys buy in. Uh, what is it like for you? Because you 
you've seen where that program wasn't bought in at all um, and not believing in something and, t- and then to kind of see that change in a couple of years. Just talk about the state of the program, your thoughts on um, Mike Norvell and uh, the FSU staff currently. I don't know everyone on the staff too well, but uh, Mike, I, I, I see, I see what he's doing, and I love it. I actually love it. And I'm not just saying this because of the, they're winning now, and like you can see the, you can see the culture shift. You can see the family, the the family coming back, the 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 family oriented, basically stuff coming back, like the selflessness. You know, at first it was all for self, like people were playing for self. Now, now dudes out there doing their assignment, dudes out there playing ball, dudes out there not worried about making every play because they know they got their man doing his job next to them. Dude actually believe in the system. They believe in their their strength program. They believe in the, the what the coaches are telling them at practice and during the game and at halftime. That that's the that, that's the difference in the buy-in. Like when kids buy in and they believe and they'll run through that wall for you, you can do it. You can take it to the sky. And that's why I'm so happy Mike is is turning around. He changed the culture. He made these guys buy in. And, and it's not it. Yeah, you can do it without shutting down social media, even though I, I like Jimbo's philosophy. But the way Mike's doing it, I love it, man. Like, I don't, I don't have any, you know, discredit, anything to discredit him, anything to say to discredit him, because I feel like he's doing what he needs to do, especially at the state we were in, at the state we were at, you know, with Florida State. We this we were low, and we had never, I don't think we've ever been that low. So I, I love what he's doing. He changed it. I mean, shit. 10 win season, first time since my freshman year. Okay, that's crazy I, to think about it. I can't do I can't do no complaining. So DJ, let's talk about um you got your upcoming podcast that you're coming out with, man. Let's talk about it a little bit and, and give the people uh, some more information on it. Uh, so my podcast, you know, I'm gonna pop it off with introducing me, letting the world know who I am and, and telling my story. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring on, you know, I'm gonna start bringing on guests and and let them let them tell their story like uh, deandre francois a lot of people want to hear about his story and what actually happened and what was going on because it was such a mess when in tallahassee when all that was going on and, and there were so many lies spiraling around that's, that's real. a lot of people definitely want to hear that story especially yeah. um you know with, with with um whatever going on with him and his girlfriend and things like yeah that, towards so. the end right yeah, right yeah. and definitely now that you know he's back on the scene he's in the xfl you know i'm happy for my boy so I'm gonna bring Francois on. I'm gonna bring. I got. I got a lot of guests lined up. It's not just gonna be about sports. I'm gonna be talking about music. I'm gonna be talking about real world situations. Like I got artists coming on. I, um, I have uh, you know, NFL players, NFL guests like my guy D Ham, the, the safety from the Bills. I'm gonna get him on for one of my episodes. Uh, I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna branch off into a lot of things on this podcast. It's not just gonna be football, but it's gonna be. It's gonna be about sports. I'm gonna talk about sports, but it's gonna be after I get my introduction out the way. It's gonna, I'm gonna talk about sports, but it's also gonna be uh, uh, kind of like a not a, a outlet for news, but you know, kind of like a, a a platform for people to speak speak on everything and how they feel, you know, and raw and uncut. Y'all know me. I'm doing. I don't give a damn. We're gonna be we're gonna be taking shots and all of that. It, look, it's gonna be like club, like club DJ. Right. <laughs> hey, real quick, I like to. I, I wanted to. I always forget to ask questions like this because I'm always curious. We go through coaches a lot too at University of Florida, but towards like the end of every regime, it's always that vibe of like the players versus the fans. And I know you guys had that vibe as well. What what was that shit like? And where does it, does it come from? Do you guys have like a, a players only meeting, or with the coaches and say, you know what, fuck the fans, or what what is that energy like? <laughs> um, fuck the fan meeting. <laughs> you know, it, I mean, it, you know, you see after the games, we'll see like the fans. You know, you know, he made a bad play or something. You know, we like just like y'all see, we see. It. You know what I'm saying? Even right. though we wasn't supposed to be on social media, we see we see everything. You know, guys search their name and all that. So um, people were people like I know me personally, and then like the guys I was around on the team at the time, you know, we would take offense to that because we were like, you know, like we we putting our body on the line for our school for you know what I'm saying, which is you guys' school too. Like we trying to you know do this for us. We're not just doing it for for, for ourselves. 
You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's kind of like a slap in the face. Like, we, you know, we can't, we, we trying. You know what I'm saying? It's not like we just going out there bullshitting every week, you know, <laughs> right. coaching matters. You know yeah, I'm about to say only only it looks like that, you know. Because yeah, it just looks like that. When you are not getting the coach how you supposed to, I'm telling you. Right. Every, and people people don't understand that. And now they're seeing it all over the country. They right. say bad coach team, you can tell. I'm not, right. I'm, coaching matters. I'm telling I'm telling I'm telling people that coaching matters. It don't matter it don't matter how many five stars you got. It don't matter. And camaraderie matters too. The team has to be able sure. to click. If the team doesn't click, y'all ain't gonna go nowhere. And that and that was the thing. Because honestly, the 2016 team was a natty team. If you want to keep it, if you want me to keep it all the way a buck with you, we just wasn't as close as we should have been. That's the Enero that got hurt, right? Yeah. If we was closer that year, and I'm we talking about that real quick because um I think the sounds are kind of there as well, man. Because because. As far as just Jimbo kind of you losing his shit because, I, if I'm not mistaken, after that North Carolina game, we had made the players sign uh, effort notes or whatever that shit was. Yeah, hey, I remember season. that shit. Yeah, so yeah. Let's talk about that for a second. Um, that that was kind of because we we were kind of, after that Ole Miss game, we were kind of feeling ourselves. You know, and we were we were feeling good. We were feeling like shit. We just came back from 22 down on the SEC team. Who finna beat us? That's how we were feeling. So I'm not gonna lie, we had some bullshit practices. We had some bull- and, and Jimbo let us, and that's that's the thing that was the difference. Jimbo let us know. And we and, and a couple of the practices he restarted them. I'm talking about from go, coming coming out of the locker room, restretching, all that from every period start starting over every period. So um I feel like just the game, um, excuse me, I'll be losing track, losing That's track. Good. But the game, uh, I mean, it, it, it just was different. You should let the people know where they can follow you at, bro. Well, follow me on Instagram, Dontavious Jackson, D O N T A V I O U S Jackson. Follow me on Twitter, D Jack V underscore. Follow the podcast page, man, Truth Be Told with D Jack on Instagram. Twitter coming soon, YouTube link coming soon. Make sure you guys subscribe. One hundred. Well, well, uh, yeah, one bro, final question, real... brother. I, I would be remiss um, before we let you go, man. Uh, how did you feel about the book bag, man? Uh, great, great question. I, you know, uh, I know the fans didn't like it. You wore it. I saw you wear it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You put it on. <laughs> put that shit on. I mean, I, uh, me honestly. Did he show y'all like, that shit before he like brought it to the team? Or was just like his idea? Yeah, like we we had, they actually like we actually talked about it. Like, see, I was I I'm not like, I'm a very nonchalant guy, especially right, when it comes right. to like that. So I didn't really like. I get that vibe. Put, it, put an input on it. Like I was just like, bro, I don't care. Uh, Whatever, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, man. <laughs> to be honest, if y'all want to really know who who idea was, it was Brian Burns' idea. No, oh, man. Man. I'm not, I'm not trying to throw my brother under the bus, but it was my brother I did. Uh, free, free Willie from the turnover satchel, man. Yeah, man, we got all that Brian, man. It was his idea. Uh, uh, he skated with that one. That's like one of the He might not own up to it now. Man. I, 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 I going to flip it now. I Who said that? After we found out everybody hated it, we was like, damn, we got we to gotta think of something now. <laughs> Hey, hey DJ, uh, keep elevating to your purpose, my dude. Appreciate you for hanging out with us, bro. Appreciate no problem. It, Appreciate y'all for having me, my man. Most definitely, bro. It's a dope for conversation, sure. dog. Glad you got to tell your story. Oh, damn. Appreciate y'all. All, All right. right. Later, bro. All right. <laughs> We're going to kill him with this one. <laughs> was there, I was like, boo. Hey, He's hey, sneaking down your seat. Bro, it's crazy. I can, I can see... Um, just looking at what, who, like who, what Burns is, who, who Burns is. Excuse me. Hey, I thought that shit would fly. Right. <laughs> I can see him being on the forefront of that shit for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I remember the first, because like, all right, I saw the turtle <laughs> chain pop out. I was like, oh, <laughs> that, that bag was crazy. nuts, man. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. When I saw that bag, I was like, yo, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs>